I would like to welcome uh, Brenda Lannan, who is our Programme Quality Director, and Elizabeth Jordan, Club Growth Director, who are going to talk tonight about Moments of Truth, which is obviously an important tool for us all in our clubs to find out what we're doing well, what we could improve on, and so on. So that's the rain tonight. Now we are going to start with a poll. And so I'm going to hand over to Elizabeth to conduct that poll. I think it's just three questions, but she will explain what to do and what she wants you to do. So please help me welcome Elizabeth Jordan to the floor. Thank you very much, Mr. Um, Training Bureau Chair. And hello, um, Petrie Du Brenda and my fellow Toastmasters. It's a pleasure to be here with you. As Dan said, I'm the Club Growth Director and help participating in this is essential for the district because moments of truth is really important for us to build quality clubs. So I wanna get us all warmed up and excited because tonight is all about um, in, been an, it's an interactive session. We're not going to sit here and talk at you or to you. We're going to introduce things and get you working because it's very much an interactive session. So we'll start with a short poll. There are three questions and I just want to get a, take the temperature of the room. So the first question is, have you ever completed a Moments of Truth survey? And that's a yes or a no. Then the second question is, have you completed a Moments of Truth survey in the last six months? And then the last question is, did your club qualify for a Moments of Truth incentive that was offered by the district last year? So if you can keep, keep the vote, keep the vote coming, I'll open it, keep it going for a little while and see what the temperature is, what the pulse of the room is. So let me share the results with you. Can you all see the results? Can someone indicate by show of hands they can see the results? Yeah, excellent. Okay. So have you ever completed a Moments of Truth survey? 43% have said yes and 57% have said no. That means there are quite a few people whom what we're going to discuss tonight is going to be new. So those of you who have done it several times, bear with us and share your experience in the breakout rooms. Have you completed a Moments of Truth survey in the last six months? This is rather surprising. 91% have said no. And I say it's surprising because the expectation for club is that we do this twice a year. So obviously that's something to think about. And then the last question, did your club qualify for a, a Moments of Truth incentive, only 30% only have said yes. Again, this is a surprise to me and a little disappointed because I know there was a very um, generous, there were generous incentives that we expected clubs to claim. So with that in mind, lots to think about. I'm going to um, hand back to PQD Brenda to do the first part of the session and then I will take over. Um, later on. So over to you, Madam PQD. Thank you very much, Madam Club Growth Director Elizabeth, and thank you for introducing the Moments of Truth poll. I'm going to introduce what Moments of Truth are and run through the six Moments of Truth. Okay, what is a Moment of Truth? A Moment of Truth is an episode where a person comes into contact with any aspect of Toastmasters and forms an impression of a club's quality or service. There are six Moments of Truth that are identified by Toastmasters International. And I'm going to go through the first three, which starting at the very top with first impressions and moving clockwise, I'm going to cover the first impressions, membership orientation and fellowship variety and communication. And Elizabeth will cover the next three, the program planning and meeting organization, membership strength and achievement recognition. 
So the first moment of truth then is first impressions. Do you remember your first meeting? I remember it very vividly. And the reason why I remember, well, there are a few reasons why I remember it so well. The first reason is because I was so incredibly nervous when I walked in the door. But my nerves soon vanished when I met the Sergeant at Arms. And the Sergeant at Arms was a lady by the name of Daria Verjans. And the reason I remember her was because of the lovely smile she gave me when I walked through the door. And sadly, Daria has passed away since my first meeting, which was in 2010. But I remember her very fondly for my first impression of a Toastmasters meeting. Some examples of first impressions relate to how we welcome our guests and equally our members as well. Because for each meeting that we go to, there is a first impression of how that meeting will go. We have been online for most of the last two years. So welcoming members online, members and guests online is different to how we would welcome our guests in in-person meetings. Another first impression is our guests invited to speak. And very importantly, in order to convert our guests to members, our guests invite to join. Sometimes we shy away from inviting our guests to join, but we shouldn't really be reluctant to, to invite our guests to join. Toastmasters is a great organization. We all know that, and we should share that with our guests. Membership orientation. So a guest has decided to join and has completed their membership form and paid their dues. How do clubs formally induct those members into the club? Some clubs have a formal induction process. Other clubs welcome the president of the club will, will welcome the new member at the next meeting. How are they introduced to our education program pathways? Are they assigned a mentor when they join? Do we know their reason for joining? Do, they, do we know their why for joining? Are they assigned speaking roles? And are they invited to join in the club activities? Fellowship variety and communication is the third moment of truth. And this moment revolves around how meetings are held and communication within the club. Are there enjoyable educational meetings with valuable evaluations, with speeches from the Pathways program, which will be covered in the next moment by Elizabeth. So I will stop sharing my screen at this point and I will hand over to Elizabeth. Thank you, Madam PQD. Just allow me two seconds to share my screen. Can everyone see my screen? So we'll say yes. Can someone confirm? Not, not yet, Elizabeth. Not, not yet, Elizabeth. Not yet. Oh, that is rather interesting. Okay. I'll go back. What about now? Can you see it now? Perfect, Elizabeth. Excellent. Okay. So, as Madam PQD said, there's six moments of truth. And one way to think of them is to group them in twos. The first two are all about attracting members, attracting guests to the club who we hope will become members. Two, three and four are all about developing those members 
and five and six are, are retain, how we retain the members. So I'm gonna do a half of developing and five and six are about retaining. So um, you've heard the first three, I'll, we'll rattle through the, this is the second three because you'll be working through all this in, in breakout rooms soon. So moments of truth number four is absolutely fundamental. It's all about um, program planning and meeting and organization of the meetings. And you know that quote well. If we fail to plan, we plan to fail. And of course, we don't want that. So it's really in, absolutely crucial that we do the planning upfront. And this is where the, the VPE and the president really can work together on this. So things like having the agendas, are your agendas published in good time? Are they promoted? Are your projects pathways projects? Significantly, do meetings begin and end on time? Are your table topics creative and are you having positive and helpful evaluations? What the research shows is if pe people who, do, um, clubs that do moments of truth and actually use this as an improvement tool are the ones who are thriving. You'll find about 20, 30, maybe even more members. So these are really crucial things to do. And when you get into the, into the working groups in a minute, we, we, we hope to hear some more of those great things that, that you are doing. The next moment of truth, number five, is membership strength. Again, I think a quote encapsulates this beautifully. Helen Keller said, alone we can do so little, together we can do so much. The Toastmasters International suggests we should have about 20 members, but I think wisdom would tell us we really need about 25 to 30 members to really make a strong club. And we, we, I say this because if, for example, you've got 20 members and only 10 come occasionally, what then happens, the members who remain are the ones having to wear many hats, do many roles, and as you know, people can soon burn out. So we, we have to um, really strive for that 20 plus. That's why the clubs that we have that are below um, 12 members or less, we have a fewer, sorry, we have a coach, we assign a coach, and the ones that are less than 20, we're trying to assign ambassadors to help. We also want to promote to, to get new members in, we want to promote our clubs in the community. And I know some clubs have got fantastic um, plans made. I know of one club, um, very exciting club I'm a member of in Ireland. They'll be, they'll be on the radio very soon telling the whole of the world how wonderful their club is. That's really good. And of course, Toastmasters who sponsor new members should be recognised um, by the club. Toastmasters itself offers three membership building programmes a year. We've just finished one Smedley, um, the Smedley Award. There's Talk of Toastmasters and Beat the Clock. And if you can participate in these, there's a, obviously a great opportunity to win, to, to gain a, an award from Toastmasters. So that's um, MOT number five, membership strength. The, the final one, so the next one, membership, Moments of truth number six is achievement recognition. And this one is not to be underestimated. It means an awful lot when we can, you know, celebrate the successes. So our members who, for example, complete their icebreaker, if they complete level one in pathways, in fact, each level, if we can celebrate that with a wonderful Canva poster, if we can, you know, write something about them on social media, present them for certificate, celebrate these successes. They're really important to members and to ourselves. And it was William James, the American um, philosopher who said, the deepest principle in human nature is the craving to be appreciated. And this is a very, very simple way to appreciate um, our members. Again, um, we can have lots of clubs sometimes have progress charts. So 
you can add a little bit of competition. You can see the names of the members of people in your club and you can see what, what they've achieved in terms of pathways. It's a good way, as I said, to get a bit of competition going, but it's also a good way to see who you can buddy up with. If someone has done your own path, you can buddy up with them and you can maybe work together or learn from them. So that's just a, a very, very quick overview of the sixth moment of truths. So just to, just to remind you of them, there's first impressions, number one. Number two, membership orientation, when we get the members in, how do we treat them and make them feel special? Fellowship, variety and communication, are our meetings fun? Program planning, program planning and meeting organization, what is the quality of the meetings? Are they organized, professional and worth coming back to? And have we got um, a membership strength of 20 or more that will maintain a vibrant and thriving club? And then do we recognize the great things that our members do? So those are the six moments of truth that any club can use to evaluate um, its quality and where it is. So I'm gonna pass back to PQD Brenda to, dis to, to um, describe what we're gonna do in the breakout rooms and how we're going to manage that. So this is the exciting part and your bit to get, in, to, to get involved and to make this, um, make learning fun. As Ralph Smedley said, says, we learn best in moments of enjoyment. So let's do that. I'm gonna stop sharing and back to you, Kiki Du Brenda. Thank you, Elizabeth. So the next, section will be the, the breakout room session. And what we're going to do is we're going to allocate each of you to a particular breakout room, six breakout rooms in all, and each breakout room will cover a particular moment of truth. So there are six moments of truth. And what we would, what we would like you to do is to nominate a note taker and nominate, it could be the same person, nominate someone to feed back to the main session after your breakout session. The breakout session will last for 15 minutes and we're at 20 past seven. So we'll be coming back to the main room at about 25 to eight, but we'll be broadcasting time messages for you in the breakout rooms. What we'd like you to do is to think about what your club does in relation to a particular moment of truth. So for example, if you're assigned the first impressions moment of truth, think about how your clubs welcome your, mem your guests. Do you have breakout rooms? How are you adjusting to being back in uh, in-person meetings if you are back to in-person meetings? If you're still online or running hybrid meetings, how are you adjusting to, to, to those type of meetings? So Mr. Zoom Master, would you assign the members who are on the call to a particular breakout room, please? But before that, if there are any questions for clarification, if there's any clarification needed, we'll take them at this point. Elizabeth. I think you should perhaps mention that you and I are going to be um, visiting the different rooms. I'll visit rooms four, five, and six, and you'll be visiting one, two, three, and we'll just be floating one, two, three. Um, around the groups. The rooms I visited, there were lots of suggestions and great conversation going on. So we'll take the first impression moment of truth. And the person, the member giving the feedback is... Myself, Aileen Chai. Aileen, over to you. That's great. Thank you very much for that, Brenda. Good evening, everybody. Aileen Chai is my name. And as Brenda has said, I was in the room where we were speaking about first impressions. Uh, we had a lovely broad range of people. We had 
uh, somebody from Port Leash in Ireland. We had heart speakers. We had Talib, um, Anglia, Cornerstone, and my own home club, which is uh, Dublin. So the points that came up, I'll literally run through them in the order that they came up. Um, the first one was the, the importance and suggested of the welcome for people and the importance of having the room, the Zoom room or the physical room available for people about 10 to 15 minutes before the meeting actually starts so that people can be welcomed, they can have a chat and answer questions, hear other people speaking, and it just gives them um, a feel how to step into the meeting and how the meeting is going to be observed. Anne also noted that on occasions, if they have quite a few guests, they will talk them through the mission statement um, of Toastmasters. And we had Mary then su suggest the same thing. The room is open in advance. And interestingly, Mary had noted that their room remains open for approximately 20 minutes after the meeting. So if anything came up during the meeting or questions weren't answered, things weren't obvious to people, they can ask questions then and members can just chat and talk with them in a relaxed manner. And John from Talib noted that a lot of the visitors they had over lockdown while he was on Zoom were really looking for face-to-face -face meetings. I think during lockdown, we were all looking for face-to-face -face meetings, if the, if the truth be told. But I suppose the interesting part for John is, is bringing those people back now as we start to go back into, into the room and be able to meet people on a one-to-one -one basis. And people are in generally um, invited to speak or to take a table topic, but it's not mandatory that they, they do speak. So that's important for them. I'm noting I have a green light there from Gerard, so I'm going to keep on talking quickly. John's interesting one as well was that he'll suggest them during the meeting that he can have a telephone conversation with them in the days following the meeting, which I thought was a great idea um, if they have any points that they want to raise. For Anglia and Cornerstone, Sue mentioned the first touch point. Great one, this. The first touch point is not necessarily the meeting. It can be the website. It can be a communication or it can be the Facebook. So she was saying that, you know, the meeting walking into the room isn't necessarily the first introduction the members have to it. So how important it is to have our PR or our marketing or whatever, have that ready and inviting for people that would welcome them in. And um, what she was saying, you know, sometimes people are very, very nervous attending and it's being able to manage those situations and make them comfortable. I leave it at that because I'm on the red light. Thank you very much, everybody. Thank you. Thank you very much, Aileen. The second group was the membership orientation group. And I think the person, the member giving the feedback is Kate. Am I right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yes. Um, I'll try to do that. So we brainstormed that and we discussed that um, uh, what about membership orientation, what we have yeah, now and what would be good to have. So um, um, taking in, uh, into account that um, regular meetings, Toastmasters meetings, they have um, a predefined structure. So it's quite difficult to, um, to provide this membership orientation during those meetings. So it was mentioned um, an idea, um, Zoom, Academy, um, Zoom Academy concept, like the second, every second um, Saturday, or maybe in the week between the regular meetings, where to provide all those um, mentorship, um, the education program and recognition system, um, learning needs, uh, needs assessment, and so on. Um, one, our colleague shared their, uh, their club uh, experience, very nice experience, having a roadmap. So what I said first it is what would, would be good to have. But what um, our colleague shared, it's an um, existing experience, having a roadmap for new members, having five meetings um, where um, um, the mentor is assigned to a new member. 
helping him to get into the, the program to, to know how to use the pathways and um, what roles are and so on. So other members uh, shared about their experience of um, providing one or two um, meetings for free and on the beginning. Also, it's encouraging to, uh, to join them at the, the club. Mm. So generally, uh, it was about that. Let me see the list of that. Mm. Members involved in club activities. In, yeah, also, yeah, we didn't talk about that too much, but sharing the experience of our club. Yeah, yeah, almost everyone is involved in some activities and all roles are by, um, by rotation, but having those permanent roles, annual roles like treasure and so on. Mm. So generally, it was about that. Thank you very much, Kate. I liked the idea of, that was mentioned by Nick Collins about gradually bringing the new member into involvements in the meeting along. So asking them to be guest greeter at their first meeting, then maybe poet master and gradually introducing them to the different roles in a meeting and also then assigning them a mentor. So thanks very much to Kate. The yeah, third mo moment of truth was fellowship variety and communication. And I understand Chris Collins is the representative of that group. Chris. Thank you, Madam Pikuzi. So yes, we had a discussion around fellowship variety and communication. Uh, we didn't get all points, but we got a, we got a handful. Um, so our first point was uh, guests greeted when they when they come to the meeting. Uh, we had a number of points here. One is um, uh, obviously mentorship or a, a body system, help people kind of understand what's happening within the meeting by introducing them gently, uh, maybe set up a body system. So you, you know, here's Chris, he's going to sit beside you. If you have any questions, you can ask Chris. You know, a simple thing to do, but it means so much when people are be, being introduced to the Toastmasters meeting. Secondly, uh, a lot of the greeting uh, responsibilities tend to fall to the sergeant's arms. Um, and sometimes clubs will have a greeter role as well or a falcha officer, but it's not just those two roles that need to be taken care of welcoming new guests. Uh, Liz shared a story where she joined a Toastmasters meeting and everybody in the room turned around to welcome her. And that was a fantastic, uh, remarkable uh, memory for her it still sticks in her mind. So take the time to greet a new member yourself. Don't delegate it to somebody else. You have a role to play here too. Uh, it's all about making people feel important, uh, whether they're old members, new members, guests, or visitors. Make everybody feel important as they come to the, the meeting. And that's, that falls to everybody in the meeting room. Uh, finally, as we come back to face-to-face -face meetings, it's obviously important to put up some directions to the room. Sometimes navigating from the hotel reception to the meeting room can be tricky. I know we're we're four floors up, so we have to put up a few signs to say this way, then that way, then this way. So little basics like that can help help new members get to the room, and then as they enter the room, oh, how are you? Welcome to our meeting. In terms of enjoyable educational uh, content, I think every Toastmaster meeting I've been to has been educational. I've always walked away feeling that I've learned something new or taken somebody's perspective uh, on board. Uh, but something we did point out is that the networking opportunities within our meetings have taken a bit of a hit on Zoom. So what I've started doing is opening up a bunch of breakout rooms at some point during the meeting. Sometimes it's break time, sometimes it might be after the meeting adjourns, and just let people move between them. So if uh, I need a conversation with Tom, I can see where he is, I can jump into the room with him, we can have a quick conversation. And it allows people to have those little side chats that we normally would have in a physical room. But in Zoom, as you can see, we're all in the same room. There's really only one conversation happening. So we need to facilitate that by uh, opening a few extra breakout rooms and allowing people to move between them. With regards to social events, obviously there haven't been many uh, during the pandemic, but we're all looking forward to getting back to meeting each other face to face. And I'm very much looking forward to the next social event, be it the Christmas party or, or the summer party, uh, when we get the opportunity to do those. Um, and finally, towards inter-club events, 
Uh, some clubs are sharing Zoom licenses, so they're obviously helping each other uh, with, with that regard. Um, in my area, WhatsApp has been fantastic uh, for helping people uh, within clubs know what's going on in other clubs and help out. So I'm going to leave it there. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you very much, Chris. I'll now hand over to CGD Elizabeth. Thank you, Madam PQD Brenda. Um, number five, MOT number five is program planning and meeting organization. Who is going to have the pleasure of sharing the feedback from that room? Step forward, please. Yes. Angela. Thank you, Angela. Uh, is it Angela yeah. or Ted? It's Angela. Angela, thank you. Yeah. So we were looking at uh, program planning. And there were a few things that uh, we started off talking about the, the agenda. So how, how we set this up and where it's set up and how much in advance. I think there was a consensus that to try and get that uh, set up in advance, um, maybe or to get the programme to start with, sort of plan several months in advance uh, for, the, for the whole year. But the, the, the agenda itself to get planned at least a, two weeks in advance and circulated a few days in advance. We had a lot of discussion as to whether to use Easy Speak as to do that. And I think most clubs did, but not all clubs. And the point was made that if you can if you can use Easy Speak, then it makes it can make the job easier. I think it, it can be sometimes a bit of a um, a training exercise to get a club to use it in the first place. But I think uh, it is a a very very useful tool. One of the suggestions for making the meeting more lively is to have things like a, a, a really good theme and you can build the theme into, you can link it to the word of the day and use it to um, sort of uh, decide some of how, what some of the speeches will be and make it sort of um, and, and uh, the to table topics as well so that they all talk to the theme. Another good idea was to when you have an, a new member to when they become a new member to ask them to read the Toastmasters um, to Toastmasters pledge um, and promise and to give, to give that sense of um, sort of power and sort of being involved in the club. And I think one of the other things we were talking about as well is to, to how many speeches. I think some clubs are, are having four speeches in the clubs, others three. Uh, I think there was a discussion as to what works uh, online rather than in person, but particularly uh, in person speeches you can have four speeches. Um, and to use, uh, so to have guests at the meeting particularly to use to have a, a guest as a general evaluator and I think um, yeah so those are the main the main points that we were we were talking about thank you um thank you very much Angela I was in that room for a little while and I know there was a very vibrant conversation and lots of great ideas and I was very impressed that Ted Melanthi's um, club has already done moments of truth so at least we know one person who's one club's done moments of truth so that was very good Okay, on now to our next, our fifth moment of truth, membership strength. Who would like to step forward and share that, please? Claire Baker, over to you, Claire. Okay, um, so this was um, all about um, main, maintaining members when we've got them. And we did discuss some of the challenges that we've had lately with losing people when we went to Zoom because of Zoom fatigue, and then also the challenges of coming into face-to-face -face with some people not ready to go back yet. And obviously hybrid seems like a really good solution to that, but it's really, it can be really expensive. So that's was some of the, the recent challenges around retaining people. Um, we did talk about how keeping in touch with members and WhatsApp, I think a lot of clubs use, that seems to be really helpful. There was one great suggestion, which was to have a summary of the meeting and the WhatsApp group. Um, just a short article, but with some of the sort of any interesting things that happen just to make those that didn't turn up kind of feel like they maybe feel like they missed out a bit and want to come to a meeting um, next time. 
We looked at um, looked about using social media and Facebook to attract people um, and some of the challenges that can be finding them online rather than just the same people seeing you all the time, which often is existing Toastmasters members. Uh, really great suggestion. When more when kind of back with the face to face, which might be coming forward, was at one club where every member had like a little postcard with information and they could drop it into workplaces, shops, you know, there's little kind of community notice boards um, as a way of kind of get, growing awareness in the community. Um, oh, again, when it came to Facebook, using personal stories of the members has been a really good way to kind of catch people's attention using pictures and just a little, um, a little bit of a, a write up of, you know, sort of what they've achieved. Um, using Having events um, or open nights can be good and maybe using Eventbrite for that. Uh, I can't see the timer. Um, LinkedIn being great for young, young professionals um, and also finding ways to capture those people who are specifically looking for public speaking. And there's a great suggestion of short videos of tips on speaking or why did you join or what did you get out of it? or what kind of type of people join that can be shared, very brief, short videos that can be shared on social media to attract new people who are, you know, interested in joining. So that was some of the ideas that we had to share. Thank you very much, Claire. Lots of great ideas there to share and for people to work on. So we now come to our final moment of truth number six which is achievement recognition a really exciting one who is going to present this please thank you very much elizabeth co-presenter and all toastmasters i have to fly through this i'm rushing to a meeting <laughs> joanna started off from a fermi club and she told us that the deepest craving in human nature is to be appreciated and what how true those words are and Joanna believes that giving members recognition is so important. They're back to in-person meeting, meetings in Fermoy and they're planning on reissuing ribbons again. Then we had Fiki and Fiki was talking about that in her club, which is Luton Communicators. If someone does a new role or an icebreaker, they give a froggy award because they regard it as a leap. Isn't that fantastic? TJ tells us that the president of Stevenage Club calls out achievements members have for either the first speech or a last speech or a particular role. And they also have a newsletter in the club, which they give announcements for members to recognise members. And finally, Leo told us that the president in his club sometimes gives a cert a lot of members want to be kept private and don't like being on social media. So in that sense, you know, um, it, it can be um, a bit tricky. And he's from Ablana uh, Toastmasters Club. One thing that Elizabeth, that you said was, where the, was there a mention of pins being sent out to club members? Well, in the breakout room that we were in, there was no mention of that, not since COVID. Mm. Unfortunately, I have to leave. <laughs> Oh, Thanks, okay. everybody. Thank you. Excellent presentation. Thank you. Okay. Um, conscious of time. I want to do one more thing before Madam PQD close up. So, this, yep. so having had this session and had a taste of, of our moments of truth, what we're trying to see is, is, is you know, what are your plans going forward? So I think that that's, that's a definite result. Um, I can share the results with you. That 71% of you have said yes, you've been going back and doing um, a moments of truth, and you know quite a considerable number. Thirty is saying not not sure. And what I would say to those of you who are not unsure, if you need any help in how to manage this process or use this tool, please speak to Madam PQD because it's part of the training and education. But it really is a useful tool that helps with visit reports when when your area director comes to see you and also with your club success plan. So this is really a very useful tool. And the other, only other question I wanted, I was gonna ask, but we don't have time is, having now had experience of this, there are incentives for um, MOT, and would you consider 
please, please, please try in for the incentives because they're quite generous. So I'm going to hand you back now to Madam PQB, um, Brenda, over to you. Thank you very much, Elizabeth. And talking of the incentive, the incentive is a two part incentive whereby a Moments of Truth meeting is carried out before the end of November. Three suggestions for the club, three recommendations for improvement are agreed by the club at that meeting. During the second half of the year and before the end of April, a second Moments of Truth meeting is held to discuss if those suggestions were implemented by the club. If they were, then please submit an application for the, to claim the incentive to myself and my email address I've put in the chat. I'd like to thank you all for your presence here. I'd like to thank Elizabeth for co-presenting this session with me and for her valuable insights. I'd like to thank Danny, the Training Bureau Chair. I'd like to thank Garod for all his Zoom mastering. It was excellent. Thank you all very much. And just to remind you, next week's session is on club mentors and club sponsors. And it will be delivered by Elizabeth Nostet, who is the International Director for Region 10 but notification will be sent out between now and next Tuesday. So I'd like to thank you all, and I will bring this evening's session to a close.